Okay, um, what I'm going to do is draw a landscape. Um, what I always do is I have a go at drawing the landscape before I, I make a little tutorial and I thought well why don't I just go for it and I drew this landscape. I've taken away the pieces of paper there and I thought well I'm just going to draw it straight off and you can see if you can do it with me and I'll just go through my thought processes as I do it. So. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw in pen, you could draw in biro, um, pencil, anything you like. Uh, I'm going to start by dividing it up, so that bit broken line there, and that's going to be a gate there, and there's going to be a hedge. Over the hedge I'm going to have a building, so um, the hedge is hiding a bit of the building, so it's going to be the roof. I don't want to do two windows symmetrical and make it look like a little face so I'm just going to put a window onto one side and I could have a top of a window or a door there and there's going to be eaves on the house overhanging and I think those are called fascia boards put a chimney there because it's going to be a little farmhouse I might have a fire and then I'm going to do the um, five bar gate which is, um, if you live in the countryside, you will know. It's a little traditional thing. One, two, three, four, five, and a diagonal line, and a fence post. Now, I'm going to pull everything to this house. Uh, under the, eave, the eaves there is going to be a bit of a shadow. I'm going to pull everything to the house, so I'm going to draw a, a line in perspective, and that perspective is going to make you look towards the house. Now behind it can I have a hill so there's a hill going up there and I don't want to do peaky mountains I don't really get those where we're from and then um, that's my landscape I'm going to have a go at drawing a tree now we've done these trees before when you do them small you can really get them in quite fast so these are fir trees be a little forest behind so and I mean if you wanted to you could just pencil it all in and then just or pen it all in and then do, and just do the tops of the trees so everything is going to become a mass and I can then work in the bottom of the hedge it can be um, quite dark in the edge and in the corner of the field there's going to cast a shadow so it's going to be my hedge little gaps there you know break it up a little bit um, now with my field I can do some grasses now I'm just breaking up the the line of course you can go like that and as you draw your line in you just Go up and down and make little divots in the. That might be a nicer way to draw the line, as though it's like a, a ploughed field, and it's you know a little bit rougher with earth in there. But I'm going to overwork it a little bit now. So at, at some stage you can go, oh well, my my landscape's finished. So. Um, here I can have a field with a ploughed field going up over a hill there if I want. Um, I could have trees or hedges there. I mean, if you had, were successful at drawing the little trees before, whether they were winter trees or little summer trees, they can just peer over the hedge. So. Now I'm going to overwork this, at some stage you may just go, well I've, I've finished my landscape, but um, I'm going to make it a little bit moodier, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put a sky in. Now, when I go like that I get a curve on my hand, so I'm going to turn the paper sideways and get a straighter line. I'm not going to worry about the edges, and I'm going to explain that at the end, because at the end I'm going to rip the picture down like you've seen the picture in the beginning. Now, to get a sky looking good, you should space out the, the if it's going to be an atmosphere, 
you what you want if the lines closer together at the base and then they space out as they go further up this has become really moody now look we are losing the trees they're still in there hidden in the darkness like a cloudy day or dusk or dawn and to get it to find that hill I'm just gonna go over there and go up to it create a nice not a sharper edge now that um, looks obviously the faster you do it the lighter the line believe it or not if you're working a biro you can actually get a really light sky at the top and really dark at the bottom by how hard you push the biro down it's a little bit more difficult with a pen with a fine liner now I'm gonna make this a little bit moodier now um, oh I could have left the gap there because I could you know put a scarecrow in and he's gonna be on a wooden frame and he's going to be badly made. It's going to be an old sack stuffed with straw, and that straw is going to, the fingers are going to come out, they're just going to be straw on the ends. And of course, I'm going to have a old pair of boots on him like that. Now, to scare a crow, he scares away crows, but not this one. If I do like that shape, so I'll do one in the opposite direction at the front here. So that shape, which is a little bit of a leaf, and then what I'm going to do is, I mean if you're pre-thinking this, you can leave a little bit of white for the eye. So, and then a tail out the bottom. So there, like that, a little bit of a beak, and then put a little bit of a wing that sticks up there so that the wing goes through there and if I'm going to have a moodier landscape now I'm going to actually cast a shadow there hey, let's cast a shadow around the scarecrow as well and I could cast a shadow not just by doing the shade and I could cast a shadow by making the foliage darker around there now if I'm going to do that this house has to be a little bit moodier so underneath those eaves is going to get a lot darker and my hedge is going to become a lot darker still if you go in different directions cross hatching but a lot darker at the base anyway so at the base of the hedge I'm just going to keep working into this now as you are working your picture you may get to a stage where you think, oh, I'm going to go too far if I'm not careful. I mean, for me, it's always good to go a little bit too far. Don't want to space them out evenly along there. So just put one there, one along there, and then not the next one even, put them uneven. Although if a farmer was planting a field, the drilling machine would have planted them at even spots. but on this field um, I want to look at as naturous as possible not that naturous is a word might be a word anyway here I'm going to shade in that hill now if I had gone over the lines earlier when I was doing the hill the sky it wouldn't matter now because that's going to disguise it a little bit those lines good when you've shaded into the house because if you go into the house a little bit it won't matter because it won't be seen now and from there this could be my gate I do a little bit of a darker hedge around the gate and leave a little white area between the gate post and the hedge to define it there might be a little hook I think it's going to be on that side there we will hook a bit of rope over there on the tree. Right, now, that, the edges there is what, uh, let's this down a little bit, so I'm going to show you how to trim a picture down. 
So I'm going to get a ruler and I'm going to chop the end off of the crow because I don't want these frilly, frilly bits up here. So I'm getting that equal distance from the edge of the paper and I pull that to my opposite elbow. And that's how to get a straight edge. Now, mold made paper, which is made in a mold, it gets a little decal edge, it's called. So if you've got nice thick paper, you get a nice decal edge on your paper and give a nice little look to it. So I'm going to turn this upside down. Just going to chop off the, all the rough bits of there. And then I can decide how far I want my sky down. If I cut it and I think, oh no, Oh, I want that a little bit lower you can then go through and then just take off a little bit more you can add bits on of course the my landscape now if you've done that and you've overworked it that's good because all you have to do is do it again and get to the stage where it's not overworked notice those two pictures slightly different every picture is going to look a bit different don't try to recreate the same picture again but have a go at doing it again you might learn something different in the process and of course as you've done this you can then still even work into it so if you're looking at it thinking oh that's a little bit better there then or that would have been nicer with a tree you can always add it in and you can always start again there we go that's how to draw a landscape